Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Jerome. I'm a member of the Society to Preserve H.O. Mencken's Legacy. First of all, our deepest apologies. This was supposed to be a Facebook Live event, but due to a glitch, it didn't happen. So we are recording it for your enjoyment. Here we are at the historic H.L. Mencken House, this rainy Memorial Day weekend. You may not know this, but Mencken wasn't thrilled with what Memorial Day became. Instead of a solemn remembrance, it became a day for barbecues and picnics. We all know that Mencken always had an opinion about something. In addition to this holiday, we're also approaching the anniversary of the passing of Sarah Hart Mencken on May 31st, 1935. Keep in mind, Henry lived his entire life in this house, with the exception of the five years that he was married to Sarah Hart. At that time, they lived in an apartment at 704 Cathedral Street in Baltimore. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be very brief. And as I was doing research, I made some notes on her background. After I read these notes, I will read from the diary of H.L. Mencken, where he talks about remembering her. Sarah Hart attended the Margaret Booth School in Montgomery, Alabama. This was an institution dedicated to a rigorous college preparatory curriculum for young women. In 1920, she was a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Goucher College here in Baltimore, and she was hired there in 1921 as an instructor in the English department. That should tell you how impressed they were with this young woman. While still an undergraduate at Goucher, she had become a professional writer writing for literary reviews and popular periodicals. This is how she met Henry Mencken, while a student at Goucher. They corresponded, and eventually this turned into something more than a college student asking a prominent writer for advice. They were married in 1930 in a private ceremony. This marriage made headlines around the country, and I mean, this was sensational. Not only did it make headlines, but this became news around the world. In her short life, she produced a considerable body of work, including newspaper reviews, articles, essays, a novel, The Making of a Lady, several screenplays, and over 50 short stories. They spent five years together until her uh, tragic, untimely death in 1935. Her death had a profound impact on Mencken, and it, it affected him for the rest of his life. Now I would like to read an entry in his diary where he talks about remembering her. Sarah is dead five years today, a longer time than the time of our marriage, which lasted but four years and nine months. It is amazing what a deep mark she left upon my life, and yet, after all, it is not amazing at all, for a happy marriage throws out numerous and powerful tentacles. They may loosen with years and habit, but when a marriage ends at the height of its success, they endure. It is a literal fact that I still think of Sarah every day of my life and almost every hour of the day. Whenever I see anything that she would have liked, I find myself saying that I'll buy it and take it to work. And I am always thinking of things to tell her. There was a tremendous variety in her, and yet she was always steadfast. I can recall no single moment during our years together when I ever had the slightest doubt of her marriage or wished that it had never been. I believe that she was equal, equally content. We had our troubles, especially her illnesses, but they never set up any difference between us. They always drew us closer and closer together. Indeed, it was only the last year or so that was darkened by them. Her final illness was mercifully short, but it was very painful. Dr. Baker and his chief, Dr. Lewis Hammond, were hopeful for a few days 
what had attacked her was not only was not really tubercular meningitis, for some of the usual signs were lacking. But when the spinal fluid was examined, it became apparent that she was doomed. Her mind became cloudy at once. Though there were plenty of rational interludes, I saw her for the last time on Wednesday, May 29th, along with my sister Gertrude. She was for a few minutes quite bright and cheerful and asked my sister about the sheep at her sister's farm in Carroll County. But the disease was advancing fast and she complained that her sight had grown dim. I had to tell her that the doctors had given her some belladonna. This seemed to account for her eye symptoms and reassured her for the moment. But after that afternoon, she went downhill rapidly and Baker advised me not to see her. I never did again, and I never saw her in death. She is not forgotten. I was immensely lucky in my marriage as I have been lucky in nearly all things. She had a sharp intelligence, and yet she was always thoroughly feminine and Southern, and there's not the slightest trace of the blue stocking in her. Marriage is largely talk, and I still recall clearly the long talks that we used to have. Both of us liked to have worked after dinner in the evening, but both of us always stopped in the drawing room at 10 p.m. Whether I, made or made, whether I made a good or bad husband is beyond human reckoning, now that the only competent witness is gone. As I have said, I think she was content with me and not bored. Marriage gave her a kind of security that she had, known, she had not known for years. Ever since her grandmother's death when she was still in college, she had been on her own, and more than one illness had threatened her with disaster. We had often talked about death, for she was well aware that her own chances of life were less than average. She insisted that she would die first, but it was always seemed to me to be improbable, for I was her senior by 18 years and had been badgered by all sorts of illnesses for years. A complete skeptic, she made me promise in case she died first to have her body cremated. Once she died on that lovely May day, I was uneasy about this, for I feared that her sisters might object. But when they got to Baltimore, it turned out that they had she had told them the same thing, and they approved. I did not go to the crematory. What was left of her was taken there by my two brothers and her brother, John. Her ashes are buried at the foot of the grave of my mother, and beside her there was room for mine. Thinking of her, I can well understand the human yearning that makes for a belief in immortality, but I do not believe in it and neither did she. We have parted forever, though my ashes will soon be mingling with hers. I'll have her in mind until thought and memory adjourn. But that is all. Whether or not it is better, better, I, so I, I do not know. But there is the fact as I see it, we were happy together and my all beautiful things must end. I'm sorry, I was getting a little choked up reading that. I mean, this should end any doubt in anyone's mind that they loved each other and, she, and he was very much in love with her. So this concludes this remembrance of her on this Memorial Day weekend and I hope you enjoyed it. And please, I encourage you to do your own research. There's a lot of information out there concerning their relationship. And uh, uh, we want to thank you for joining us. And uh, we remember her on this weekend. Thank you, and we'll see you again.